Alrighty, we'll get started. What? Where did the plague start? The origin. And once again, I think a lot of you know this. Olivia, what do you got? Mongolia. Mongolia, that's a very good answer. Gobi Desert, Mongolia, um, good answers. China is not quite as good, but close. So write that one down, please. Does everyone have something to write with? Bradley, did we give out all the pencils? I gave out pencils, and then before I left, I asked if anybody needs pencils, but it down, and no one Okay. So I hope everyone has one here. I'm just looking for that. Okay, next question. Someone read it for me while I'm looking for this, Vic. Who just said the origin? Okay. So the origins of the plague. Who can tell us... Um, a little bit more details. We know where it started, but who can explain a little bit um, more details about how it started? Peter? We don't really know how it yet. Okay. We don't know how it started, but we think it's rats. I'm going to repeat a lot of stuff because the mic's right here, and I'm not sure it's going to pick up everything. You can talk loud. It's good. You don't need to yell, but... Okay. So, what is the plague? Were the rats really the plague carrying the plague though? No, no, the fleas. The fleas and the rats. Okay? And that's one part I think you all know. Yes, we do know that. We don't know how to start. No, we don't know what someone F L E A S is fleas. Oh. Okay. Let's talk about the spread. Robert. Okay, and that's what I would put under patterns here. So he said it traveled on the trade routes. That's what patterns I'm talking about here. It, it followed the trade routes. That's something you definitely should mention about the spread of the plague. Follow the trade routes. I, yes, Rosie. When I said what? Trade rocks is under the attic. That would probably be on the origins part. Please on rats. Okay. You might want to also explain under origins. How did it get to humans? Bites from the fleas. Okay, bites from the fleas. I'm I'm under I'm jumping around. I can tell I'm confusing you. Let me go back to origins. Let's stick with origins for a minute. And some of this could be fit in different areas. Okay, that's part of why it's confusing. And I'm going to ask you to write this in a kind of a short essay form. So. You're not going to have to have it exactly like this, but you need to make sure you have all these ideas in there. The fleas and the rats are very important. Okay? And then uh, it's the fleas, not the rats. Biting humans is important. Okay? And then, yes, ma'am. Sure, yes. This, the pattern, and I wrote this on here to be specific, I'm skipping down there is the trade routes. That's the pattern that it spread. Does that make sense to everybody? So it followed the trade routes. It followed the ones, the Silk Road through Mongolia, and China, and all that. It also followed the sea routes. Okay? You might want to mention the rats got on boats for the sea routes. Are you working on this, Keith? Yes, I am. Let's put that away, please. I think you need to think about distractions a little bit as a group. Okay? Other things about the spread. Brad. They, um, sometimes they, when people got more, when a lot of people got it, they come out of the catapult and over and a lot of people got it. Okay? Can you, can you define who they is in this case? Um, Europeans. Europeans? 
We're which they? The ones clinging and the ones receiving. Okay, the, the, they were the receivers. Um, someone else want to explain that a little bit more? Peter? The Mongolians would throw um, these bodies over in the cities to spread it. Okay. Um, why is this on me? This is not supposed to be on anymore. So I'm going to pick up one random one here. It's not the best. So right here is where, where it enters Europe. So we have the Mongolians coming in, fl flinging bodies here to Kaffa. The people in Kaffa are Italian, right? So they take their boats back here to Italy, and that's where it enters. Genoa, remember the Genoese? That's the city right there. So they take a pretty long ship ride right here. But I t the Italians, because they stuck out here, and also because of Rome being powerful, these were some of the leading traders back then. They had easy access to get over here. Constantinople right here. They had the Ottoman Empire, who we're going to talk about more coming on. This was a Muslim uh, empire right here. Ottoman, it controlled all of Asia and this sent, uh, Middle East here and also Northern Europe was under the Ottoman Empire during a lot of this time period. So, came in there. Yes, Olivia? Um, where did they travel? By boat? By boat. They started at Kaffa right here and they traveled up to the Genoa right here, which is in Italy. That's the Genoese in the song. Now, the biological warfare, I want to remind you. We don't know if this is true or not. This is kind of like one of those rumors of history that could have happened, but we don't know 100% if that happened. So I just want to throw that out there. Historians can't prove either way. Okay, now that I have so many windows open. Um, I think we hit most of the stuff with the Black Plague. Let's talk about the consequences. And I feel like that first part, a lot of you understand that part of the Black Plague pretty well. So I hope that you show me that on Monday. The consequences. Let's start with demographic. Dick. The patterns. The patterns is the trade routes. And the spread is that whole thing coming from Mongolia and then going into Europe. You know, you could add in there. There's a lot of other facts you could add in there. How fast, how many days you lived. Um, Small hand. Okay. Demographic consequences. This one's easy. Except that you guys struggle with this vocabulary word. Once you know what it is, this is the easiest consequence. What's demographics? Yeah. Okay, population is part of the demographics. So what happened to the population? Decreased. Decreased. What's a good number for how much? What'd you say, Kevin? Okay, millions, but that's general. Yeah. A third is a good number, okay? Historians don't know exactly, but overall it was probably about a third in Europe. It was also devastating in Africa and Asia, too. Are you going to Christian? So that was easy. Easy consequence. And because of that, all the rest of these things happen. So this is the first consequence that results in all the rest of them. Yeah. <laughs> Nope, that's demographic. The population will know it's demographic. Um, social. And what I'm going to add to this, you might want to add, what we study, the religious consequences fall under social. So it's a subset of social. Part of it is religion. That's a big part of life. In anybody's life, but especially back then, they had one religion predominantly. So, yeah, what's the thing? Um, well, the, they, the, 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 the
Okay, excellent. So if you can summarize that in a few words. People who lost faith in the Catholic Church because the priest didn't help them and died. And the priest, you you can you as a common person, what they call a lay person, which means not a priest, you did not have the ability to talk to God directly. You had to go to the priest. And so when you do that and he doesn't help and maybe he himself dies, they sort of lose some confidence in the Catholic Church. Yes. Okay. Uh, oh wait, I remember. Um, under um, social gospel, people are blaming Jews and leopards. Okay. So under social, they started blaming Jews and leopards. Whoever's talking to them from the sides. So they started blaming Jews and lepers under social. What's a leper? Anybody know? Yeah, yeah leprosy. Which kind of looks like the black flag, right? If you've never seen leprosy, Google it. It's nasty. So when you see it, in leprosy, your skin rots and falls off you. And it, it tends to happen a lot on your fingers and toes, your extremities, and then maybe onto your face. And you literally lose body parts. Well, you can see how the black flag is kind of like that, so you, why you might blame a leper. But on the other hand, why blame a Jew? Yes? Okay. Well, can you explain it a little bit more clear? Maybe because like religion nature, they were poisoning wells or something. And they, they, they blamed the Jews for poisoning wells. Again, yeah, they didn't know it was from the police and rats. Christian. Oh. Really? So they blamed them for poisoning wells. There was, there was religious differences. So people always blame people who are different, right? So that's one reason. Different religion. Specifically, what got, how's God different to Christians and Jews? Okay, what about it? I know what I want to say, but it's really hard for me to explain it. Okay. Peter? They didn't believe that Jesus was God. Right. They didn't believe that Jesus was God, the Messiah, Christ, or whatever word you want to use. And not only that, what did they think about Jesus and the Jews? Okay, hold that thought. Let's come back to that. That's, I want to talk about that next. They had a name for the Jews related to Jesus. What did they call them? Yeah. They called them Christ killers. So they blamed the Jews for crucifying Jesus. So you can see this is not making the best friends. And that's the other thing. Now there's another reason, because as often as there's more than one reason why people don't like each other. So there's religious reasons, there's the fact that they're different, which means they dress different, eat different. Um, you know, Jews don't eat pork, so it's part of their religion, so that makes them different. Um, so different diet, different dress. What were you going to say, Robin, the other reasons? Okay. Okay. We could tie this right into our Occupy Wall Street right here. How do people feel about banks that have all the money? Don't like them. Don't like them. Okay? The Jews, the, the Catholic Church says, looks at the Bible and says, Christians are not allowed to loan money for interest. And they took that and said, Christians can't loan money. So, for most of Europe is Christian, you're not allowed to loan money. If you need to borrow money, the Jews were the people you could go to to borrow money because they weren't under this rule. So, if you borrow money from a Jewish person, and guess what? They would charge you a lot of interest. Do you like this person that you owe money to and owe a lot of interest to? People naturally don't like that person. Especially if you see this person is getting wealthy and you feel like you're here to get by. There's that economic hatred of this person is taking advantage of me. So a stereotype even to this day of Jewish people is that they're cheap. These are stereotypes. That they're good with money and that they're cheap and that they'll try to cheat you. Those are people to this day still believe that about Jews. A lot of people do. So, and it goes all the way back to then. But you can see why that would make them a target. Do you understand what a target means? What did they do to the Jews? They killed a bunch of them. So a lot of Jews fled Europe. They went to Poland, Lithuania, they, they, Russia. That's why when Hitler comes later, these Jews are all over the world because they've left Europe in this time. 
because they're being persecuted. So, well, they were Western Europe, into Eastern Europe. So, Europe, uh, Russia's kind of in between there. So, 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 I think we've, we've done pretty good with that. Well, one more thing. What happens to, well, this relates to the other ones. We'll go on. Political. Kevin, what do you think? Okay. So political and economic are similar, related here. I'm going to write one word up here for you. We talked about feudalism. Feudalism is looking Bolivia. Um. Well, the king was had all the power over Okay. Who wants to add to that? Brad? So basically, there wasn't a lot of people that wanted to work for the king because they were said, you can't find anybody else, we're going to charge you this much for, for us to work for you. And they said, well, if you're not going to pay that much, you're going to work for someone else. Okay. And part of this. I, I gotta rephrase some of this. Part of it is just the king, but it's nobles. So most people didn't dra work directly for a king; they worked for nobles. And so there might be a noble who was over Walker, and then there's one over Northview, and a, a, one over um, what's another one nearby? Kenwood Hills, Wyoming, Kentwood, Grand Rapids. There might be two or three nobles there, because it's bigger. And then what happens is half these nobles die in the plague. Or a third of them, let's say. And now, who gets that land? Do you think the peasants are going to get it? No. Or do you think the neighboring, the neighboring nobles going to come over and say, "Oh, I want this," but then the other neighbor is going to say, "Right, so now we have some little wars starting." Or then we say, "You know what? I don't know people. I say you people over here, your noble died, so the king over there comes over and says, hey, skip that land. I want you to come work for me, and I'll pay you more money.'" So it, it, it becomes kind of like LeBron James is a free agency. Everyone wants you know, until the wages go up when there's free agency. We need this person. That makes sense? So feudalism, the key word here, is land. It's based on the land. It's a relationship between peasants and the nobles based on the land. And it starts to fall apart because of this. That's what you'd have on our political and economic together. A what do you what, what eventually starts to happen here is actually the king starts to gain more power. Maybe this noble says, I'm going to take over these three or four things, and now he's not really a noble anymore, he's a king. So some kings start to rise and take power, because there's a vacuum, there's chaos, right? So what do people want when there's chaos? Power. Stability. Well, you guys yeah. might not know this a lot, because you live in a pretty stable country. But if you're in a country right now, let's say one of these countries that had all these riots, what are they looking for? They're looking for someone to come in and take charge and give us stability. And when I was in China, that was a big thing in China. They want stability is more important than freedom in some places. So I'm less interested in, in freedom. I'm more interested in stability so no one's going to come with a gun or whatever a sword and kill me at my house because there's law and order. Once there's law and order, then maybe I care about my freedoms. But Stability is usually more important to people than freedom, if that makes sense to you. So, um, having the freedom to do whatever you want isn't so helpful if you have to worry every night that someone's going to come kill you. Does that make sense? Freedom of speech doesn't matter if you're not safe. So first you want to be safe. And stability, government, and law bring safety. So when that, so there's no government and law, it's anarchy. And it's... Um, warlords fighting against each other, and that's kind of what it is. So you want someone to take control and make you safe? Uh, yes. Do you hear about the Did they find them? They Why I did not hear that. Who's the Gaddafi? Who, who really? are you talking about? Oh, yeah. Can you can you tell us what country Gaddafi used to be in charge of? Yes. 
So this is definitely something we're going to study this year. Fascinating that happened today. I have no clue. Um, he was a uh, the leader of Libya for 30 plus years. I don't know how many. And they had a revolution and got rid of him late late summer before school started. But um, maybe it was spring. I think it was it was later. Um, definitely something we need to look into. Fascinating. So, I hate that we can't even go there right now, but I want to focus on this. The, um, so, are we good with political economic? What happens to people's pay? So, wages go up. You should definitely have that on there. The poor, peasants, peasants' wages go up. Peasants' wages go up. Um, what else happens to the economy? Look at Okay. Okay, and that's why the wages went up, supply and demand, because there's a large demand for labor. Um, we can add up here there was a famine before this, so now there's enough food for everybody. Yes, Rosie? Yes, that's one of the things we should say. Where'd they go? Pardon me? Okay, but the people who live. Did not all stay on farms. Where did they go, Kevin? There was a movement towards towns. So people started leaving the country and going to the towns and taking jobs that weren't farming jobs, agricultural. That's that's both a social and an economic change. You could add under political too. There was a war going on when the plague started between England and France called the Hundred Years War. The war ended, stopped because of the plague. Years? It was a hundred. It was called a hundred years war. I don't know the exact years, but it lasted a long time. They're fighting. But the point is, can you fight a war when everyone's dying? Yeah. No. So everyone dying stopped. Ended this war because you lost your soldiers. Yeah. Like crazy, and then for one year they kept fighting, and then the French won, and then it was over in country for one year, so they stopped it. Okay, but the black flag is definitely a factor in stopping the war because you're just trying to get your food picked. You don't have time to send people out to war. It costs money to send people out to war, right? The king, someone has to pay to feed all these people and take care of them, and then their families. Someone has to still be on the farm growing all the food. And if everyone's dying, you just you don't have the manpower to have a war. Um. So I think we've hit the major things there. Questions? Okay, push migration. Who can tell us what it means to push migration and then we want to add some examples of what it is. So let's see, Robert. I mean, something like a war or something makes you leave your house, or like your country or whatever. Okay, so the key word there is probably makes you leave, right? How? Okay, slavery would be an example. So we had two examples so far. Slavery war. So the word key word there is when you push, it's a forced move, or they make you move. It's not by choice. You're forced to move. Slavery war. What else? Flag. Flag. And with our stories, a lot of you, we don't have a lot of push stories to the United States because a lot of people want to come here, right? So a lot of people, it's a pull. The United States, but in some countries, it would be a lot of push if you go to a country that has a lot of problems um, internally. People want to get out of there. Yeah. Okay. I had I'm trying to think of who it was. Second hour or third hour. I had a girl whose family 
came to the United States because her great 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 grand was somewhere down the line, stole something from the King of England from there, was in trouble, he was a criminal, and he was banished here. That's a push. Australia was a penal colony. So they sent all the prisoners there. In England, instead of storing them there, they sent all the prisoners to Australia. So that's how most of the English people got to Australia is they were criminals. We don't want to deal with you, we'll ship you off to this big island. Yes? Crime. So crime's another one. Okay, pull. Who can define pull for us? Robert? If you want to, go somewhere. Okay, so something is enticing you, you want to go there. Pull. You're attracted and you want to move here. It's your choice. And what are some examples of pull migration? Yeah, Robin. Hey. Sorry. April. Yeah. You're just doing so good. I don't know. I don't know. Because you're like peas and carrots in the year. Yes. Like this. Okay. Sorry, April. What? What? Uh. Back to the question. What? What's a poll? Okay, jobs could be a poll, especially nowadays. What else could be a poll? Olivia. Family. Family. That. Freedom. freedom. Jobs. Freedom. That could be religious freedom. It could be religious freedom. It could be political freedom. Yeah. Safety. Okay. Good. All examples. Um, land. Back then was another big one. People came to the United States and Canada and Central and South America for land. Europe, if you look at it on the map, it's small. So there was it was crowded. You could come to this place where there's lots of land. Alright. Consequences. Let's skip that part. Your papers don't look like mine for some reason. So let me look at one of your papers. Okay, let's look at the third page. There's supposed to be a map on there, that's why there's a big blank spot. Let's look at the third page first, and then we'll come back to the other part. The consequence of the the Columbian Exchange. We want to talk about the stuff here that was exchanged, and then we'll talk about the consequences later. So let's do the stuff first, if that makes sense. And what we want to do is we want to put it in the right spot. So we got from Europe, uh, Africa, and the Americas. Certain things came from certain places, and they went to other places. So we want to be able to identify that, right? So who can give me, and again, this is products, people, pathogens, you should still be taking notes on this, and one other one. The third page is what we're doing. We're skipping the second, we'll come back to it. It should say from America, from from Americas, because it's not just the United States here, we're talking about North and South America. Alright, so let's start throwing them out there. Be ready to write. Are you ready? Speed writing. Wait, should we go we'll do an order? So what came from the Americas? Give us some things that you know. Let's raise your hands so we get one at a time. Yeah. Potatoes. Important one. From America. Potatoes. Write it down. Keegan. From where? Um, not sure where. Anybody know where sugar came from? Yeah. Jamaica. Nope. It's a huge product there now. Okay, nope. Nope. Actually, that was not even on the chart. If you want to add one on the bottom, from Asia. Sugar. Let's add from Asia to the bottom. So sugar becomes a huge huge product for the Americas that's grown in the islands like Jamaica and down there. But originally was not here. Came from Asia. Sugar cane. If you want to be specific. But yeah, can what else? Tobacco. From where? Yeah. Americas. Tobacco. This becomes the drug of choice back then. Which helps with trade. When you have a, something that people are addicted to, I mean you know how people have cigarettes and they go without them? No. So let's say, let's give an example, China. China doesn't want to trade with anybody anymore. So what do they do? They introduce tobacco to them and give them a need. Now, oh, now we need to trade to get tobacco. So they force China to trade in a way 
by introducing a product that dick sucks, which China really doesn't want to trade. Yeah, look at that. Okay, T, where's it come from? China. So Asia. T is from Asia. So add that category in the bottom. From Asia, T. Peter. Maddie, you got one? Okay, we need more products, guys. Olivia. So from Asia. Asia. Not a huge important one at this time because it doesn't really come to the Americas. I've got a lot of buzz in here in my pocket. Someone told me. Okay. What? Me. That's not my phone. What? Okay, Coco. Okay, Coco. Coco is called C O C O C O. Yeah, with an A on the end. And that comes from where? Nope. Nope. Coco comes from where? Americas. Chocolate comes from South America. Here's the thing, though, guys. It wasn't good back then. It had no sugar. Right? It was all like. It was you ever have that baking chocolate? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's what it tasted like. Chocolate with no sugar. So, because they didn't have sugar. So it's not the Europe, it's not the Asia sugar came with the South American cocoa to make the chocolate that you know today in life. So, yeah, I, I stole some of that chocolate out of the cupboard when I was a kid. Big mistake. So, yeah, vanilla is another one that smells good. Um, Peter, other products. Salt. Salt comes from where? Africa. That's a, that's a natural resource, but that's, yeah, primary from Africa. Well, they might have had some, they had some salt here, so they had the ocean, you know. Um, Wait, what? So, Africa. What? Okay. What else? You guys might want to listen to the rest of this online. You two that are leaving. Okay. We got a lot more products we need to cover. Yes, Robert. Horses. Coming from where? Europe. Europe. Write it down. Horses from Europe. What about anything else related to horses from Europe? Dang it! Phone. Okay. Reminder, people are listening to this, so we need one person talking at a time so they can hear. So, related to horses, how about livestock in general? Yeah. All the livestock Europe. came from Europe. So cows, chickens, pigs, very little livestock in the Americas. They had llamas, and they had turkeys. So. From the Americas, you can put llamas, turkeys, and they have a few other things. But, but most of the animals that we eat came from Europe. Okay? Let's talk about plants for a minute. What other plants, other than potatoes, came from the Americas that were are very important? There's lots of them. There's hundreds of them, probably. But there's a few that are most important. Kyle. Tomatoes. Tomatoes. Write it down, please. We got potatoes, tomatoes. What else? Cam. Corn. Corn. Huge. Corn, very important. Peter. What? Yep. Weavers. Oh yeah. Come from there. They become more important there. Anybody heard of this place? Kibasa. This came from the Americas. Write it down, please. Kibasa. This is, we don't really eat it much here. This is a staple. In Africa, this is a staple. There are literally, there are literally places in Africa that live primarily off this. This is their main food. It's not the healthiest food. It's not, it's kind of a plant that they ground it up and eat it. It's a starch. So, um, it's a staple in Africa and it came from the Americas. So that's a huge one. Um, yeah, I love it. Okay, grains came from where? Nope. America had very few grains. Who knows, Robert? I don't know that. Who knows where grains came from, Robert? 
Yeah, well, grains came from Europe. So from Europe, grains like wheat, rye, barley. They didn't have any of these grains Hops. in the Americas. So they didn't have they didn't grow those kind of foods. Yes. Gold. Gold. Well, okay, gold's a tricky one. Gold starts out in Africa, okay? But by the time we get to here, um, I took notes on this one. Let me look at my notes. During the time here, oh, before before Columbus came, two thirds of the gold in the world came from West Africa. That's what I was called yeah. the Gold Coast. Two thirds of the gold came from Africa before Columbus. After him, they don't say, but they do say that the gold in Europe. Um, where is it? Oh, it doesn't say. Oh, okay. The gold from the Americas that went to Europe was worth 2.8 billion dollars in today's terms. So that's how much gold they stole from the Americas, mostly mostly South and Central America. They're not out of gold where we are here. Um, and what gold there is, they didn't know about yet. So 2.8 bill stolen gold to Europe. Yeah. Gold, I would put on the Americas. And what else went with gold? Silver. Silver. So gold and silver were just stolen by the ton. Um, and that note, there was $200 million before Columbus. Here's a couple numbers for it. There was $200 million in gold and silver in Europe before Columbus. By 1600, which is 100 years later and change, eight times that much. Gold and silver in all of Europe. That's how much they took. That's just by 1600. They were still mining after 1600, right? So that's just the start of it. Um, let's finish this because I'm not going to remember my notes. So don't put your stuff away yet. From Europe, you should have livestock. You're missing a bunch of stuff here. How are you helping me? Um, diseases. Here. You got to talk about any diseases. What diseases? Were shared. Smallpox. smallpox came from Europe to America. So AIDS. from Europe, smallpox is the number one killer of Native Americans. AIDS. Sounds terrible, but it's just what it was. There's lots of other ones. Smallpox, most deadly. Yes. Slaves. Okay, slaves came from Africa to to there. That's a huge human shift in population. What about Europeans? They also came to America, right? Yes. We have thousands of settlers. So Europeans. And Africans are coming to Americas. Europeans by choice, Africans not by choice. Yeah. population in Africa due to slavery. There is. It becomes a problem. So you have a lot of population shifts there. And there's a decrease in population a little bit from Europe because they're all going to there. Um, what about religion? Okay. Which religion comes to America primarily? Christian. The Spanish bring Catholicism. Especially the Central and South America. The English brain. What do the English brain? Christianity. Okay. The English tend not to be Catholic. Just like our country is not predominantly Catholic. Right? Yes. You know there's only been one Catholic president ever in our country. Anybody know who it was? Abraham Lincoln. Well, one, one Catholic president, maybe it was a big deal when he got elected. Uh, I'll give you a hint, he was assassinated. JFK was Catholic. So, most, most of the English people, with the exception of one state, Maryland, Named after Mother Mary, right? Most of the early 
thing for Protestant is there were things like Puritans. Protestants. And then the Baptists came over. Another version of Protestant. Yeah. That's part of it. Yeah, that's part of it. That's the Anglican Church came out of that. So, um, I'm afraid I'm going to miss something important here. Oh, I have one. Are we, what do you got? Gunpowder. Okay, gunpowder came from where? Okay, we might want to add guns. Weapons come from Europe, right? Okay. Here's what you need to do today, guys. Let me. You need to.